Well, good morning, everybody. Oh man. We got a picture of the peacock and it's making noise sitting here next to me on this table over here. Let me zoom back out and let me spin this around a little bit. There we go. Something more like that. Well, good morning. It's 7.30 a.m. in Phoenix, Arizona, and you have joined me for morning devotions. And I am at the Sohoro Park with the peacocks this morning, as I have been a few times in the past. You can hear them, their bird call. And there's a small engine plane flying over the top. Wanted to talk to you this morning. I was thinking to myself that in my childhood, back in the 70s, I remember at church asking my dad for a sen sen. It is a small breath freshener candy that was started, I believe, back in the 30s. It's been around a long time, and I was looking a little bit at the history of this candy breath freshener. When it first came out, they called it breath perfume, and it was actually one of the first attempts by a candy company to market something to make your breath smell better. Now, I don't know what you use, from time to time to make your breath smell good. Maybe you use an Altoids, or maybe you just chew a piece of gum. But there are times we would like our breath to be fresher than it is. And actually, when Sensen first came out, brushing your teeth was not even a popular thing to do in the culture. And so they marketed this little thing. They they actually began to market it in the beginning in the cosmetics area because they called it a breath perfume. Anyway, it was called Sen Sen, S-E-N-S-E-N. -S -E I used to, when I was growing up, think that it was Sin Sin, but my dad wouldn't carry around Sin Sin. He was a preacher. It was Sen Sen. Anyway, it came in a little box that looked like a matchbox, and he would slide the little drawer open on it and shake it, and this little black uh, licorice-tasting mint would come out of the box. Now, I've had people at church sometimes say, hey, do you have a stick of gum? Have you got a mint for me? Because there are times we want to hide the smell of our breath, isn't there? Well, I wanted to apply that in a scriptural way by turning to Proverbs 28 and verse 13, which says this, People who conceal their sins will not prosper. Now, Pastor Ron taught on finances yesterday. He talked about how the blessing of God follows our obedience with our finances. Well, here's another verse that talks about there's something you can do that uh, will cause you not to prosper, and that is to conceal your sin. Now, there are people who know they're in sin. They know that they're not living the way Scripture calls them to live, but when they come to church, they put on their spiritual breath mint. They do, they're spiritual breath men because they don't want anybody to know that they're living in a way that is not pleasing to God. They're doing what? Proverbs 28. Let's look at the peacock. Hang on a minute. It was getting so close to me, I thought I better catch him. Anyway, that's the peacock. People put on their spiritual breath mint, don't they? 
because they want to conceal their sin. They don't want anybody to know what's going on in their life that is unpleasing to God. So again, Proverbs 27 or 28 verse 13, people who conceal their sins will not prosper. It says, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. But if they confess and turn from them, I don't know if there's hidden sin in your life, if there's something you're trying to conceal, you think that nobody knows what's going on in your life, and so you're just trying to get by by putting a spiritual breath mint on your life, and you're trying to conceal. Well, Proverbs reminds us that if we conf confess and we turn from our sin, that there will be mercy for us. God's forgiveness is there for you and I. And these peacocks do make a lot of noise. They do. Well, let's pray this morning. God, we thank you for your word. Lord, we don't want to be people who cover up sin. We want to be people who confess our sin. Lord, your mercy is available to us, God. I pray that you would, again, awaken in our spirits the idea that we need to confess and turn from sin. Not just confess it, but turn from it. Turn away from it. Stop doing it. Lord, we know that you've called us to live lives of righteousness and to be like you. So God, I pray that this week as we determine on this Monday of the week, Lord, to live our lives in a way that pleases you. Help us to do that, God. We do confess our sins. We do turn away from those things, that those sins that easily entangle us. And Lord, we want you to know that we're here to serve you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, there was, there was no peacock spreading its wings at the moment. But maybe... I don't know, we can walk around a little bit, maybe. Whoa! The peacocks want to do their own morning devotion. That's why they're so loud. Let's see if we can get close enough to this one. This was the one I was showing you earlier, and he's come all the way over here to the bench. But boy, they're pretty, aren't they? The beautiful blue plumage, their feathers. Yes. Love the peacock. Laura Lynn says, I love the peacock. Look at that peacock. Oh yeah, he's not minding too much getting up close to him. He's seen a lot of people around this park. For sure. Let's see, can we get around and see the feathers? Oh yeah. We got the feathers. There they are. There he is. All right, guys, that's it for today. God bless you. Have an awesome week. Have an awesome day today in Jesus. Bye-bye.